Um, but yesterday, many of us were glued to that live footage, weren't we, in disbelief at the clashes between police and anti-mandate protesters at Parliament. 87 protesters were arrested in the violence yesterday and seven police officers required hospital treatment. So how did it get to that? New Zealand Police Association Pre uh, uh, President Chris Carhill joins us now. Chris, thanks very much for your time this morning. First of all, can you just give us an update? Do you have any update on the injured officers? Maureen and Melissa, look, I have an update from last night and I will just caution that there was a bit of organised chaos. So, But my understanding is the officers have what you'd call significant but not serious injury. But I just want to get an update on that this morning to be 100% sure. But overall, um, probably pretty lucky given what we saw yesterday that there wasn't some very serious injuries. Absolutely. We're... Were they sufficiently equipped? Because we saw pictures, and we're actually seeing them now, these two officers with uh, riot shields, but standing in front of a blazing fire. I mean, that's not going to do much to protect you, but they had to try and hold that line so the protesters continued to get pushed back. So did they have enough safety equipment? Well, yeah, that's something I certainly want to review with the officers that were there. What I will say, there were multiple different teams, some with the full riot gear, um, complete the helmets, protection gear and shields, others with just shields. And uh, uh, what we have learned in protests is you've got to have the right equipment. And so we want to make sure. But overall, given the relatively low number of serious injuries, I, I think it was probably get, got it pretty right. But certainly you've got to learn lessons from these things. We saw that uh, hundreds of reinforcements had obviously been brought in from around the country to carry out this operation. Did they have a, a choice in going there? Because this is quite some operation to have to be involved in, the risks that they had to put themselves in. Uh, did they have a choice? Well, uh, certainly everyone volunteered to travel out of town, but the reality is police are incredibly professional. They put their hands up. The last thing those officers that were there would want their colleagues to have to go alone. And um, I can tell you they, they were keen to be there and keen to do um, everything they had to do. Well, many had been there for multiple days doing you know, the, the long airs. So a um, no, very professional bunch of people that have turned up. Would earlier action or did earlier mistakes lead to a situation where police were put in a more risky situation than they should have been? Look, I've asked officers on the ground about that that were there from day one. They reckon we probably had one day of an opportunity. By the second day, things had grown so big that the number of officers available simply couldn't have dealt with it. And we saw that when they arrested 120 people. They simply became overwhelmed. And it also became very clear there was an underbelly in that protest who were there for a fight. They were only there for what turned out to happen yesterday. And that's what police had to have a large force to deal with. So why was that one day of opportunity missed? Who should have been across that? Who should have been the one to say, this is our chance, we're going to lead the operation now? Well, it's a very fine line. That first day was seen as a protest. And remember, New Zealanders have every right to protest. Um, but you'd say, where was the intel that these people were going to camp in and stay? But... My information is those sorts of occupations were planned constantly and never eventuated. So, look, it's something that needs to be looked at and I, and I think police need to do a good debrief to understand that. But my information is it happened so quickly and expanded so quickly that they simply didn't have many options.